Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website, doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 1,200 articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness for disasters, epidemics, and more. The last couple of videos had Nurse Amy show you how to open up surgical supplies safely and how to prepare lacerated skin for suture closure. Today, I'm gonna to show you one way to close. That decision, by the way, shouldn't be automatic and must consider a number of factors we've talked about in previous videos, especially if you're off the grid. I should also begin by saying that this video is my own opinion, based not only on decades of experience, but taking into account the limited supply of sutures, level of training, and less than optimal conditions when there is no functioning medical system. If there are qualified medical professionals available, please don't do this at home. Seek them out. What's the most appropriate type of closure for the survival medic? It has to be one, simple to learn. Two, use as little suture material as possible. It's survival, remember, they're not making sutures anymore. And three, since the medic won't be suturing very often, I hope, allow for an occasionally poorly executed stitch without unraveling the entire thing. Notice that I'm not wearing scrubs because the chances are that you, survival medic, won't be either as you're faced with injuries and illness and long-term disasters. Wash your hands and let's go. First, I want you to take a look at this laceration I made on my 95-year-old grandmother. Just kidding, this is a pig's foot, an excellent tissue on which to learn suturing. Other than us both being mammals, we're not otherwise related. When you look at this laceration, it's pretty clear that it's not gaping open and that there's little or no tension on the wound. Better than suturing this entire wound, consider using Steri-Strips or other surgical tapes, relatively inexpensive items that can be stockpiled in quantity. But since we're demonstrating suture closure this time, we're going to leave that video for another day. By the way, there is no rule that says you can't use sutures and Steri-Strips in the same closure, and it certainly will extend the life of your limited supply. Here's where we left off with Nurse Amy in previous videos. Now it's time to take the suture out of its package and load the needle. You'll open the package, use your needle holder to grasp the needle and pull it and the suture string out of the package. Don't let the string stray outside your sterile field. You may need to adjust the needle with your fingers, just beware of the pointy end. By the way, if you're right-handed, the sharp end of the needle will face left. If it's left-handed, it will face right. For most purposes, the pointy end should face the ceiling. You can hold the needle holder in your dominant hand with your fingers in the holes, or you can palm it if it's more comfortable to do it that way. Note that you're using your index finger to guide the needle through the skin. The other instrument you'll have is your adsent forceps, a kind of tooth tweezer that you'll hold in your non-dominant hand like a pen. Note that I loaded the needle close to the middle of its arc. Most videos will tell you to load it at least two thirds of the way from the pointy end. This is fine, but the further back that an inexperienced medic holds the needle, the larger the chance that it will bend if they don't follow the curve of the needle as they stitch, especially the smaller, finer needles. Many videos will tell you to have the laceration facing you horizontally rather than vertically as we have it here. But if horizontal, you might have difficulty seeing under both sides of the wound edge because you're going to have one that's always going to be facing away from you, essentially. In any case, you may not have a choice based on the laceration that you wind up being faced with as a medic. You should position yourself in whatever manner allows you to be comfortable, have the best access to, and visualization of the wound. Many closures call for starting on one end of the cut and going to the other. The off-grid medic, however, should place the first suture straight in the middle. And each suture we place is going to be independent of the other sutures. These are called interrupted sutures. As I mentioned, this allows the person who doesn't suture every day to keep an occasionally weakly placed stitch from unraveling the entire closure, as might happen in a continuous closure. If you did that with that, well, it only has knots here and here, so if one of those knots is bad, the whole thing will unravel. In simple interrupted sutures, the needle should enter the skin at about a 90 degree angle to the skin and about a quarter of an inch from the wound edge. Go deep enough to prevent any area of dead space not closed under the sutures. Dead space allows the accumulation of blood 
It allows the accumulation of inflammatory fluid and bacteria below the skin closure and it could be a source of serious infection. If it's there, you may need a second, sometimes a third deeper layer using absorbable sutures, something we've talked about in earlier videos. But we're doing a simple skin closure today. Go through the skin on one side, holding it with the AdSense in such a fashion that your hand doesn't obscure your view of the needle. Then grasp the needle with the needle holder and reload. Notice that I always have the AdSense forceps holding the skin when a needle is in the patient. This prevents the needle from moving around and getting lost in subcutaneous tissue. Enter from inside to out on the opposite side, but at the, about the same depth and width as the first, making the stitch as symmetrical as you possibly can. Once you're through the second side, pull the string all the way until you have one long end, one very long end with a needle, and one very short end without a needle. The easiest method to complete a suture is called the instrument tie, which is perfect for the survival medic as each stitch uses up very little suture material. Here we have the loose long end and there's the short end. Put the head of your needle holder right in the center and go twice around the head of the needle holder and grasp if you can, the very tip of the short end and pull to the opposite side. And what you have here is you have a surgeon's knot. This is known as a surgeon's knot. And the good thing about a surgeon's knot is that it's going to stay in place without any effort on your part. So I'm not doing anything with it and it's still staying in place and things aren't falling apart loose. Now more knots are definitely going to be needed more than this, but these Secondary knots are only going to need one go round with your needle holder. And now you're going to go ahead, do one knot, and then pull to the opposite side. And then you're going to do a few of these. You're going to go around again, and you're going to pull to the opposite side. You're going to go this way and pull to the opposite side. Once you've put a few knots in there, you're going to go ahead and grab your suture scissors and grab both ends of the string and then cut at about, oh, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch. Now, if the laceration edges no longer gape and come together pretty nicely, you can use stereo strips or butterfly closures for the rest if the laceration isn't over a joint, under stress, or very long. Otherwise, you might have to bisect the remaining open tissue and place the suture in the middle of each then apply maybe stereo strips in the middle in between that or even other sutures if you're over a joint. Remember that joints that get a lot of strain need a lot of sutures, sometimes as close together as a quarter. If they're not over a joint, they can be farther apart, especially if you've got stereo strips in between. These can be removed in about a week, less if it's on the face and more if over a joint, where at least two weeks or more would be sufficient. Suture material should be as thin as possible on the face, but larger in thicker skin or again over joints. There's a lot more to suturing than all this, and we're going to discuss a lot more in future videos, so please subscribe to this channel. This is Joe Alton, MD, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you don't have a good medical or dental kit, I know where you can find one. Just check out Nurse Amy's entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.